So my first uh, story for you, my first piece, is really about somebody who has a story to tell. Uh, thank you for being here. You guys are great. I'm really just a blind MC seeking the soothsayer cipher, freestyling into my walking stick. I am anonymous in these woods. See, I am my own sangha. Wandering from bonfire to bonfire, I seek a guild of griots convening nightly. I hear there is a band of blind MCs who see rightly. I hear that they're able to sacrifice their interpersonal fear to carry a collective flow. So lately, I've been practicing freestyling into my walking stick, and when I swing it through the air, I am inquiring. I rely upon the stillness of dead stumps and stones to get the clearest picture of the pitch black. It all takes shape when my stick smacks. Vibrations creep and concretize, and paths begin to form, fogged and iridescent. Darkness forgives me for my foolishness and loves me when I question. So lately, I've been practicing, freestyling into my microphone, and when I sing into the air, I am desiring. I rely upon transient spoken words and hope to peek the design within the darkness is a mind I woke to speak to. And so I must keep true to the foolish love in question. So if I ever do meet those elusive MCs or commune with unaccommodated poets, I can show them how I woke to step to fire and spit rhymes that outline a shape-shifting abyss. I'll let the metronome of crackling flame forge me a map, and I'll let it lead me where meek peace bringers rap. Yes, I will sacrifice my fear. I will practice every year, and I will see my own foolishness through from shade to shape. Thank you. <laughs> this next piece, I'm a Northampton native, by the way. Shout out all people who are in Northampton. <laughs> um, that being said, living here is... Um, I always get so worried about like a dangerous oversimplification of what can be called racial problems or the racial problem. Uh, often the way it gets talked about, especially here, uh, is I feel like very impersonal and taken as like an abstracted intellectual idea. And there's all this rhetoric that's so nice and it sounds great. Um, but for me, I've always felt that recognition of someone's humanity is that first moment, right? That's that first thing, and that's be beyond all rhetoric, and that's beyond anything that could, you could throw out to, that sounds right, or having the right opinion, or having the right attitude, this feeling that, the, it, we're not talking about an abstracted problem, we're talking about something that's being negotiated every moment. And this next piece is about that moment and about the recognition of humanity that can exist there. And it's written from the point of view of a white supremacist in the 1950s. Wandering from the back of the black man's jazz club where the sweaty sax was in sync with the snare drum where the trumpets were gradually unpacked by the finger-plucked bass slap and scat, it made me sick. When I saw them spun drunk dancing their devilish whim, it made me sick. When I saw how a bass drum brought one down like a dog below a girl as she jumped over his back, and then they all laughed. I hate that sensual, nonsensical, degenerate jazz. And so I wandered from the back of the black man's jazz club with my despising pistol purposed in my pocket. And then I saw him. Green eyes cut into silent obsidian, his face black as my lustful oblivion. And I wanted to grab this flower to smell and to hold and even to kiss as the symbols washed and rode and crashed our souls to recognition and it made me sick. It made me sick when I saw the hatred I'd preserved in myself. Same secret I when all my feet moved against my will as I wandered from the back of the 
And then I grabbed him. And I went to hit him, but his face was so meek, I made motions to kiss him. I went there to kill him. But when I saw his slender mouth move to smile back at me, when I laughed, I left the pistol for a minute in the back of my mind. Thank you. I've got one more piece for you. Thank you for listening and being here. And you guys are awesome, by the way. I was jamming out the whole time, like feeling you. Great. <laughs> At the center of a labyrinth hedge maze laid Cupid. With his headphones plugged in the belly button of the Buddha, who sat cross-legged in an ashtray expounding sutras, slurring Sanskrit, his lips dribbling juice of the white lotus root. And Cupid's mind was tortured. He held up an orchid and said, this benevolent Buddha I shall never be. For I'm not love, I'm a symbol of love. And the metaphor is evident only to those who sleep on shafts of sunbeams. And even those who know me only know me as fleeting. I am the furnace in which their fire is feeding, their dire needs and desires breeding. But me, I'm just a baby. Buddha, say me some scripture, say me some rhyme that will rip open my cocoon and butterfly bloom the true essence of timeless moon-dusted love. Buddha's eyes sank low like a moon-dusted thug. He said, cuz, what you gotta understand is that transience will thieve all notions of you. Mankind will drown in translucent oceans of truth, save the ones that understand that there is beauty in blue. Now, if you sail the sea and fail to see the beauty is you, you might wind up looking for it elsewhere, crawling around a hedge maze like a baby. At that, Cupid paused. And he reached in his diapers, and he pulled out a pistol. He said, you know, this is all I've ever found in this place. Sometimes I put it in my mouth and imagine the sound that it makes like a loud detachment. Like I can hear one big bang that collapses the walls of the labyrinth. Buddha, the nature of quiet escapes me. Desire and hatred create me in their likeness. I'm like a baby. Phantom pains float out my brain and all the strangers I don't believe in. And when I close my eyes, I see them bent and bewildered like wilting flowers, afraid to transcend reason. Buddha said, behold, your mind is in season to bud the drugs it needs to acknowledge itself. Your freedom in knowledge itself. So hold this moment. This flower, like it is everything you have always been without, like it is all that you have, and you have everything. Now, Cupid cocked back the gun that he held in his mouth, and he wasted himself mid-nirvana. Buddha's blood-spattered face remained still as he picked up the orchid beginning to wilt. Struggling to let go of his in-breath, he said, may babies be born tonight. Thank you. <laughs> 